Hey guys, in my last video, video 92, I took three new hair pieces and uh, I just opened them and talked a lot of shit. But then, off camera, I cut them into nine hair pieces for myself, which have all been brushed from back to front. So they're ready to apply. Also, I bleached the front of all of them using that hair dye I showed you in the previous video, which is just any peroxide, blonde peroxide. I left it exposed for about 25 minutes, I think. And after that time, uh, the hair had lightened, but not become completely blonde. And I thought that's not fair enough, that's, a, that's enough time. And I just washed it off and then and then rested each hairpiece on, I flicked the water off like that. And then I put each one on my knee and then brushed it in the direction I wanted it to be ready for application. Then I pre-glued my head with Walker Ultra Hold. I forgot to apply the uh, sweat prevention stuff. It's on the floor somewhere. The Walker Tape uh, Max Sport no sweat stuff. I didn't use it. And then after that, see, no, there's no glue here, right? But there's, there, I put glue on my head up there, so I could put this on first. It's just a lot easier, I find, because if you if you put the glue on there first, then add alcohol, alcohol to that, and then push it down, it just doesn't uh, dry quick enough. If you put it on your forehead first, then wait for it to dry, then spray alcohol. It'll be dry again within about 30 seconds. So within that 30 seconds, after I've sprayed alcohol on it, I put this on, just jostle, jostle it into position, and then that was it. Then I brushed all my hair back, and then I painted this with Walk Ultra Hold. And now, I don't really see any need to put any alcohol down, but I'll do it on there anyway and now I'll just put it in a position by the way if you can see I didn't cut that number out so I'm hoping that won't become visible to anybody and I didn't have to guess where to put the glue at any point in, the, in, that, point, in that operation that's on there all the way around to the edges now I'm just going to pull it down to where I think my front hairline should end up which is there, if I cut it correctly, hopefully that all lands in position exactly. And that will not dry within 30 seconds like it would if it was lace because there's no air getting to the area that I just sprayed with alcohol. So why did I spray the alcohol? I just get the feeling that if I melt the glue a bit before it adheres to the other surface, it has more of a potential to get into the microscopic grooves. If you know how a gecko's foot works, how, how a gecko can walk upside down on the ceiling with its feet, it's because microscopically it has thousands of tiny hairs on its feet and they all grip into little gaps in the microscopic paintwork or timber or something allowing it to grip on well enough so it can walk up and down. Because remember, a gecko, a lizard, is much heavier than an insect. So I'm reluctant to brush this back with full force, I'm just doing it gently while it's still drying. And by the looks of things, I have put it on, on an angle. But luckily, that is a good height. I think, for the hairline. So, tomorrow, when I give myself a haircut, I'll begin by chopping that bit out. Now let's have a look up close at these V-loops that I've claimed to have bleached perfectly.
And if you look at that hair colour, compared to the colour right there at the front edge, it's just slightly lighter there. I could have afforded to have left it on longer, but I'm not sure if this was one of the earlier pieces that would have had an extra five minutes to react. Or if that's, the, if that's one of the ones that had the maximum 20 minute kind of, or 30 minute exposure to the peroxide. Because the V-loops still are visible. But in a very minor way, there's definitely not a wall of hair happening there. Um, that glue there is because I missed with the brush when I was painting back there and it's like the amount of glue just landed on the hair. So on this side, Yeah, that I will I will cut all of that out tomorrow, remembering that you cut below where you want it to end, and then hairs will start to be sacrificed or medic, and then you cut it out a second time because you can't just cut back in where you want because you'll lose a few hairs, and just trust me, you need to cut it twice, cut it shorter, like prematurely and then just get that last bit of overhang with a second cut. And then you've obviously got to clean off that glue. Well, I've obviously got to clean off the glue. In terms of the... How did it all land over here? Fairly good. Make sure it goes right to the edge. Now, in terms of the seamlessness from my forehead, there is almost, well, there's basically no lip. I was talking about the lip in the last video with the Swiss lace, with the French lace. And I said that French lace is about 30 times thicker than 0.03 millimeter. If if French lace is one millimeter thick, I might be exaggerating, it could be 0.8 millimeters thick. But if it's one millimeter thick, then it'll be 33 times 0.03, right? That's significantly thicker. Even if it's only 10 times or 20 times thicker, it's still much thicker. This is, poly is the thinnest. 0.03 millimeter is the thinnest and probably the strongest, but because the V-loops are maybe one of the least durable if you are not careful with the V-loops. So in terms of app applying the piece to the right spot, that side is probably correct. There is a bit of a wall here happening, but that's not because of the V-lips there. That's because there are residual hairs stuck in that were cut off, but the base of them didn't come out. But it's still my fault for not bleaching it long enough for those to have completely become blonde. So potentially I might re-bleach the front of those other eight hair pieces there. In terms of the width of the stencil, I found the last stencil cuttings to be a little bit too wide. So I made, I cut the edges off the stencil a little bit, the stencil shaped like that, and I cut off, cut off there and there. So it fits and there's less of that problem, but when I was putting it on just before, You've got less visibility when you put a poly piece on to get it into position, especially when there's long hair like this. Can you see the quality of that hair? It's really nice, soft and beautiful. 
but um, as time goes by, you really don't want to be doing this all the time with your hair because you can, especially if you've got product in your hair, you want it, want it to be wet product or spray or something and then do that. But don't get some hard clay and just go because you'll be ripping hairs out with um, the, the V-loops on poly. So, almost due to give myself another haircut with the uh, beardscape trimmer and the eighteen millimeter attachment. I uh, totally don't like the way these attachments work. Also, as I've used a bit more, uh, I found. I don't need the speed control, it's in the way. I just want to start it and stop it. That thing has been a major function to just slide the, the teeth towards the razor edges is somewhat useful. But like I showed you on my pre previous razor, you have a slider like that that just comes in and out all the time, all the way up to something like this length. So. The beardscape is not the easiest to use. And the thumb button should just be right there, not down here. I've got to readjust it in my hand to get to that button. And it's not completely quiet. And I do find that I've got to keep going over the same spot more than once. So it's not a miracle of nature or anything. It cost me 180 bucks. It should cost you 50 or 60 dollars if you're in we're number one country. So this set up at the moment that just came out that's a very long hair um it's still a bit wall it's a bit, it's a bit of a wall of hair i might have to pick out pick at that a little bit but i'm extremely happy given that it's been a few months or a couple of months at least since i wore poly last time i just having worn french lace for so many days I just know that lying in bed, I'm not going to be able to feel the glue. And when I get out of the shower, I'm not going to be able to see the exposed glue puffed out. I'll just, I won't have to do any maintenance on, on this after I've cut my hair and cut that bit out there. There'll be no maintenance. And just let's see how well I glued it at the back here. It's hard to tell when I've got this much leverage on the hair because I can sort of tug on it. Whereas when it's brushed back and into the, for the rest of my hair, it won't be a problem. It seems fairly accurate. So, that's the result of the bleaching. And the other thing I found to be hugely effective, not only in making the transition from skin to hair good for a white man, but if you're especially pale, even just doing a bit of this along the front, I haven't tried it with poly, I don't really want to stain the plastic with the stuff. But this stuff's really good. Tan in a can. Tan airbrush in a can. It's really good. You leave it overnight, you'll think you're just turning into a black man. But um, when you shower, you'll lose about 80% of the darkness. But it'll still be tan looking. It looks very brown, not orange at all. You can do your whole face, but I'm just going to do the front top bit at the moment. But if you've got stubble and stuff like that, it can create patches. So if you've got a beard and you're going to shave after you've done this, shave first. I can't be bothered, so I'm not worried. Also, it looks nice on your neck and stuff like that. 
But if you're gonna wear a low shirt like that, don't just wear a t-shirt like this and do it. Take your top off, then do it. And, and <clears throat> get a towel and, and wipe your ears down because your ears will not hold the tan look naturally. I'm running out of stuff. I really love it, I'm gonna get some more. Maybe a bit too much. And do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Don't get it on your hands. It will deeply sink into your fingerprints and any calluses you've got. It doesn't really matter if it looks all, you know, disgusting on one part more than another either because when you wash it, it'll fade evenly. Also, try and get it in your eyebrows so much. And Probably hold it further away from your face and stuff. God. Make sure you get your hump. If you put on this much, you might as well rub it in and just quickly wash your hands properly with soap. Otherwise your hand will be more tanned than your face. And do not worry about the way you look when you've got the spray still on after, before you've even showered. I'll leave it on for overnight while I sleep. Need soap. Doesn't seem to be coming off my hands. I might have to do it again tomorrow in that top part of my forehead as well after I cut that back. Because I really can't be both doing it right now. And um, probably best if you don't have white pillows either. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably come back tomorrow and either show you the rest of the cutting and stuff or 
I've known you for a few weeks or something, I don't know how old they're. Um, this is what you'll look like. You want to be like me. Makes your teeth look whiter. Don't worry, it seriously will not look like this when it, after you've had a shower. Most of this is just the stuff that is put in here as colouring to sort of show you where you've sprayed. Trust me, it's okay.